I'm jumping into the middle of a call with this guy. We got cut off for the first minute. He's from Indiana. He lives in the British Virgin Islands, and his goal is to go to Vegas and play in the World Series of Poker, but he's debating on whether to play cash games or tournaments. Check out this awesome episode of Ask Alec. What do you kind of want to accomplish in Vegas? Um, my, my goal would be the same thing that I would do uh, when I went to the casino in Indiana, which was I would sit down, um, essentially I'd get there, you know, a few hours early. I'd sit at the one, two tables, kind of build up. Right. And I'd usually sit down with, with you know, a standard 200 and, and build it. Uh, the last time I went, I think I went to four. And then I popped over to a satellite and went from there. Cool. So you're just wondering, like, advice, general advice for your first trip out to Las Vegas to play during the World Series of Poker. Yeah, I mean, that would that would be the goal is to play in another event. So what's holding you back from doing that now? I'm trying to kind of get a picture of your situation. Oh, um, I live in the Virgin Islands. Wow, good for you. So, um, catching planes and, you know, affording trips like that are not as easy as, as it was when I was in the States. Now, in the States, of course, I lived in Indiana. It's an easy two-hour drive to the casino. I could go there, you know, anytime I wanted, really. I see. So and out here, we don't, have a, we don't have a casino out here that has any tables. The only table they have is a 1530 fixed. And that is not not my game. I see. So you're in Vegas. You're you're from Indiana. You live in the BVI, and you want to take a trip out to Vegas, but you're needing some structure to put some money aside to plan for this trip and figure out how much it's going to cost you, and basically how to make the trip work. Is that right? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I have an idea of what. It was more of a question of what should be my game plan to accomplish what I'm trying to do. Totally. And, and, and see if, if anybody that lives there would have a better... Because right now, all I'm doing is grinding, you know, micros. So, you know, I, I would have to... I won't be coming out there with much, but I know that in my past, I've been able to bankroll up when I get there. So, and, what I would do is really reverse engineer this trip. Like, you want to figure out how much this trip is going to cost you in terms of time and money, and then right. really reverse engineer to figure out, like, what you need to save up to make this trip a reality. So you're in a spot where you want to come to Vegas, you have some goals, you want to play an event. I would get down on paper exactly how much that event's going to cost, exactly how much money it's going to cost, and how much time it's going to cost, and then really plan out every single aspect of this trip from the flights, the hotels, sure. the cost of the event, the cost of food, the cost of entertainment, other stuff you want to do in Vegas. And really get this down on paper right. and say, okay, my dream trip to Vegas costs $50, you know, $5,350. Okay, I need $5,350. I also want to be responsible to say that that money is a percentage of my overall bankroll so i'm not gonna just wait till i right. save up 5350 and spend it all in vegas because then your bankroll is going to go from x to zero you need to make sure that this money that you're using for your trip is not going to hurt you long term if you lose in sure. vegas which is really possible it, spending money and playing a tournament yeah Absolutely, it's definitely possible. The beauty is, I have I have paid for the trip and the airfare already. Great. So now you're in a spot where you just need to keep going down that path and say, how much is the rest of this trip going to cost me? What's it going to take to save that money? And then how do I make sure that this money is a percentage of my overall bankroll? So you don't want right. to like let's say you don't want to invest more than twenty percent of your bankroll in this trip to Vegas because realistically, let's be honest, you're playing a tournament. Most likely, you're going to lose, even if you're the best player in the world. Correct. That's just the nature of the beast. And so you don't want to be oh, a, yeah. you don't want to be in a spot where you're over leveraging yourself for this trip. You come back home to the BVI and now your bankroll's shot. So you want to make sure that you're saving right. enough money and you're being fiscally responsible on the back end so that when you come back from this trip, your bankroll's still in healthy standing. So I would figure out what level of risk you're willing to tolerate based on your personal situation. Like, 
how much of my bankroll am I willing to put into this trip to Vegas, then reverse engineer and not take that trip until your bankroll is what you need it to be. Or, you know, you're going to make other sacrifices. You're going to say, all right, well, I have the trip planned in August or July. I need to go then. Um, I'm not going to eat out for the whole month to save 400 extra dollars, do that four months in a row. Sure. And now I'm going to make that that conscious trade of my trip to Vegas is worth me not doing this activity on the side or you know maybe you're not going to put uh you're not going to do something else that you would do to save that money on the side but it's really about making a trade in terms of you know you want to take this high risk high entertainment enjoyable trip and it's going to come at a cost so you just have to make sure that you're you're leveraging that in your in your in your everyday life right that sounds that sounds about right good thing i work all the time i guess yeah and like (laughs) You know, realistically, the trip's not going to cost that much. You already paid for the flight and airfare. I would just really get down on paper how much this trip is going to cost and then reverse engineer from there. Once you have the total cost of the trip, it's easy to make the numbers work. But you're never going to make the numbers work if you don't have the cost. It's all going to be arbitrary. You're going to just keep trying to, you know, figure out how much you need indefinitely. So, like, if you get a specific dollar amount that you actually need down for this trip, it's it's tangible and now it's something that you can actually achieve so that's how i plan my poker travels i've been using this system for over a decade to plan poker trips where i'll go somewhere and i'll say how much do i need what's it going to cost how much do i have to make back during in cash games to pay for the trip how much is my hourly what's the rake how much how many hours of poker am i going to need to play to pay for this trip is it worth going and i look at it from an roi standpoint like a business just like I would any other business business venture, and that's how I sort of think right. about poker, um, especially you know when you're trying to make the numbers work. Sure. Well, and that's and that's what I was curious about is is whether I should just stick with my the the plan of, of hitting the one twos and just go from there. But the, both the whole bankroll thing that's probably get, getting it right written down is probably probably number one number that, one that's one of those and then you could kind of reverse engineer then you can answer your own question and say okay you know it's going to take me like you know what's my hourly at one two how what's the difference between how much i have and how much i need okay that difference is two thousand dollars my hourly at one two is 50 an hour do the math you know that's x amount of hours right. you know what i mean and so so you're you're reverse engineering and you're saying is it worth you know, 40 hours of what, like whatever, let's just say, is it worth 40 hours of time playing cash games to play this one tournament where I'm 80% to lose? Is it worth 40 right. hours of my time? Yes, maybe, if, if your ambition is really to play that tournament. If your ambition is to make money and lower your variance, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe you'd rather just invest those 40 hours in one, two, profit on the trip, come back a winner and forego that tournament and that's the that's the question that you really need to ask yourself what are your priorities and is it worth that trade you're making a conscious trade you're trading your time for uh the opportunity to play this tournament and is that worth it to you like what are you know how important is that tournament to you how important is taking the shot to play the event well and how much more important it is to stick with variants especially right. because you're 100 percent correct that's why I only play cash cash games online is because the tournaments it's it's too much swing. You totally. can go on a drought for in in tournaments for days, but I'll have a winning day most you know, five out of the seven or preaching to the choir, seven, man. Still I doing agree. Better. And this is something I encourage all my readers to really go through this self awareness <laughs> process of like every but look, everybody wants to play the tournament, right? It's sexy. Everybody wants the glory of the final table of a World Series of po- like everybody wants that. That's a cheap sort of feeling. It's like, of course you want that, but is it worth? Right. The real question in my book is: is that chase of the five percent, two percent, one percent chance of really hitting it big worth the forty hours of your time to grind that money back? And like, how often do you want to make those trades to try and win that lottery? of the tournament versus book the win and have guaranteed implications for your lifestyle of 
you know, being able to make a profitable trip, knowing that you're going to go to Vegas and be a winner, basically knowing in terms of like almost guaranteeing a win in cash games, knowing you're going to win five, six out of seven times, um, you know, like, is it worth right. that trade? And so that's something I would implore you to really think about as you're going through this process. Get those numbers down on paper so you can have a tangible uh, idea of what you're actually trading. Like how much of your time is going into sacrificing to play this tournament and is it worth it? You know, and, and, and ultimately is it, yeah, is, being okay is with the result. Like, like it's worth it if you are happy in the most likely scenario, which is you lose. So you have to be happy yeah. knowing you're going to play 40 hours, hypothetically, of live poker to make the money to play the tournament, most likely coming back from the trip a loser. And that's that has to be something that right. you're like, I am happy with that result. Because if you're happy with that result, then you've won. Then, it's a, then you're on a free roll. Because if you win the tournament, yeah, you're going to well, be even happier. But if you're not happy with that, that result, and- that's something to think about. Yeah, absolutely, and that's I think I think that's what I get caught up in because the last time I went, I did so well at the tables. I went into that satellite for cheap. Yeah. So I was getting into the tournament anyway, and I still came out a winner. But it was because I was grinding the one twos, not because I was in the tournament. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Totally, man. So I have that. I have that feel. I have that feel of, you know, it was it was okay that I lost the tournament because. You know, I was still walking away up. So maybe for and you, a beautiful feeling. one thing you might want to consider is what might be worth it for you is to make double the amount of money of the tournament in cash games. So that if the tournament's a thousand, you play cash games until you make two thousand, so that you're free rolling for half your buy in half your money on the tournament and even if you lose the tournament you're still a thousand dollar winner on the trip so the tournament is a complete free roll because you're still up money whereas you might not be in a spot where for you what i'm kind of hearing from you is you might not want to leave the trip breaking even because that's going to feel like a loss of your time whereas if you play the tournament and you're still a winner it takes the sting off of losing because you know you still won on the trip so maybe for you it's, right, exactly. it's winning double the amount of the buy-in of the tournament that would be that sweet spot for you you know and it's all about how much risk you can handle and how much of your time you're willing to trade in cash games to pay for that tournament you know like for me and this is just my thing like I'm just not willing to trade that time, which is why I don't really play tournaments. Like, I'm just, I just, like, every situation that I get in, I'm like, like, I lived in Macau for four years. I played zero tournaments in Macau. Like, every time I had, I I walked down to the win, and there was, like, the 5K, APPT, whatever, whoever, whenever, it was always, like, there's a 1K, 2K cash game. Like, I'd rather just make my hour. Like, that was always my thing. And so... I never made that trade because I wasn't okay with being a loser on the day or the week and then missing my EV and like, I wasn't okay with that trade and I never made it. So it's, it's not about, and I'm not telling people that what I did is right. It was right for me. My whole thing is about being self-aware of what's right for you and then making sure you're mapping what you're doing to your actions. And that's the game. Yeah, that makes complete sense too. Awesome, man! I think you're going to be that's fine. My game is cash. You said it. <laughs> you're going to be fine, man. I love um, it. You know, think this. I over. know. I just got. You know, you get that excitement in you. You you book the trip, and it's like it it, it immediately flashes me back to those days when I was at the casino in Indiana, and just you know, cash. I'm going to be grinding the one twos. I, I I know I will. I'll probably get down there and see the cost of the tournaments and be like, meh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some I'll people stick, see the I'll tournament just stick with my cash. Some people see the tournament and then they get lured into, you know, the sexiness of winning and the promise to get rich quick, be at the fight. Like, you know, it's tournaments are really like, you know, they sort of represent the the dream in society that like you're going to just have overnight success 
and you're just going to get rich quick. Oh, yeah. And so I see the lure of tournaments to most people because they could start with a thousand and end with a quarter million. Whereas cash games, you start with a thousand, you end with fifteen hundred. That's not really sexy to most people. They don't like the grind. They don't like the idea yeah, but- of you know get rich slowly over time, but guarantee you're going to be a winner. And you know you you go go to the farm with one seed and you come back with two seeds and you do that every day for a year and then now you have a big pile but that's not sexy to most people they just want to go to the tournament win a million dollars and, and be done and so i see why people are drawn to tournaments my whole thing is if you're really looking at it like a business it makes so much more sense to play cash because you know like you said five out of seven you're going to win whereas tournaments nine out of ten you're going to lose how is that a oh, business yeah. plan? And so my whole thing is just understanding yourself to figure out what it is you're actually motivated by and why you want to play in the first place. And I think a lot of people maybe are aware or not aware of it, but they're really drawn deep down to that get rich quick thing, which is why tournaments appeal to so many people. Um, but I think a lot of people that play those tournaments from a bankroll and a business standpoint would be better off just grinding the cash games. Heck yeah. Well, and then if you think about it even further than that, you bankroll your cash game, you come home with money, you put it back in your bankroll, and you save up, and you go again. You play bigger cash games. You know, like, that's yep. that was... Yep. I, I can get a bigger cash game going on the site, and then, hey, look, I got a bankroll, and oops, I'm going back to Vegas again. This was my business Let's model for... Do it all for, over again. You know, this was my business model for over a decade. You know, this is what I did. Um worked really well for me that was just you know how i looked at it well and and seeing seeing as how you've done that's that's why i I said you know what let me reach out to somebody that knows a heck of a lot more than i do thanks i mean to my whole thing was like just to get that just to get that thing in your head like you know what talk to somebody that knows what they're doing i always thought you know like in tournaments you could make a lot of like i did well in tournaments i have like a good tournament history uh, because I did well in the few tournaments that I played, but I always knew that like, if I was going to invest all my time in tournaments, the major determining factor of my career success would be luck. Even if I was the best player in the world, luck would dominate whether or not I was, you know, reaching the top of the industry. Whereas if I played cash games, I knew that skill was going to play out in the long term. And I was going to win. So I was like, you know, I can't afford to play tournaments as a career path because there's just too much variance involved. Well, and there's too many too many folks that have money to blow and they want that glory. They want that. Yeah, I mean, everyone does. Tournament. Shit, like, I oh, did too, you know. like Let me see my, I'm going to go for a bracelet. I got all this money laying around. I can just do it. And I do too. And not affect their play or even, they're not even that great a player just because but they have the money to do it i do too man right? like i want to be at the final table of the yeah like everybody dreams about that sort of stuff but it's like at what cost that's my thing yep yeah bank bankroll first yeah i mean it depends you know like if you're really trying to make poker into a business and a lifestyle where you're funding your trips through the cash games you're playing, that's really attainable. Like some people come to me and they're like, dude, Alec, I'd love to travel the world and play poker. I'm like, okay, like how much do you need per month to make? Like 3,000, 4,000 play? Like you don't need a lot of money if that's really your ambition and you're willing to live right. cheaply and stay in cheap places and just pay for your bills. The thing is that people get caught up trying to be fancy and do it all overnight. Whereas if you just play two five No Limit Hold'em, that could pay the bills and you could live, you know, you could travel around the world and play poker if, if that's what you're doing, if you're living yep. smart. The thing is that people also want the glory of making a final table of a 2K side event. Then they're playing 2-5 No Limit Hold'em and 2K tournaments, and then they try and get fancy. Mm-hmm. And they're wasting their bankroll. And and it might and work out. And they for one out of grind more. For one out of ten people, it works out, but they're for every... For every success story of one out of ten, there's nine out of ten that are good that could have made it that just you didn't hear about, and everybody only focuses on the one out of ten. Yep. Yep, that's it. All right, man, we're good. 
hit me up in a, in a month. Man, Let me know I, what you did. Yep. I, I appreciate it so much. Thanks, sir. Yep. You got my email. DM me. Later, man. Yep. Absolutely. See you. Bye. Peace. You send me your questions, I'll keep answering. Thanks for watching Ask Alec.